Ah. Ah. I am Buddha. Oh, welcome. Buddha. How are you today? Oh, it's a beautiful day. So fortunate I'm to have you here. Thank you. I've come to talk to you today about connection. I know that many of you are wanting me to finish up about the third eye and the crown, but there are so many important things going on right now. Many of you know about your chakras in many senses, but I would like to talk to you more today about connecting one with another. There are some of you out there that are alone, or at least you feel alone. You're lonely, or at least you feel lonely. You know that the ascension connects you through the light and through the love that everyone has for one another in the sense that the ascension is moving in a direction upward. But let me, let me speak to you about connection right now because there is a great darkness on the other side of this positive connection. Not that I want to concentrate on that at all, no. But that I want you to be aware that your connection must be found every day. When you get up, when you embrace the world in the way that you embrace it each day, you need to know that your connection is important, that your light will be part of the great flame that is the connection to Mother Earth. You need to visually and emotionally and spiritually reach out to connect every day. Why do you need to do this? Because if you do not do this in this time of great ascension, you will not feel the energy that is needed to be the perfect person that you are to be. And you will not give the strength of energy that is necessary for the ascension to move in at a quick pace. Now as you know, there are many that are out there to stop or bring the ascension to a slower pace because they want to control everything about all things on this planet. But Strengthen your connections one to another. Strengthen your thought processes, praying for one another. Strengthen all those things that bring community about. Strengthen your heart muscle so that you may feel the empathy or the telepathy from one to another, even though there may not be anyone close by. You are important. Your flame burns as brightly as anyone else's. Do not be fooled to think that you do not have a great need to connect. You do. And this will also bring you to other connections that you may not already have. The universe wants to work with you in finding you some great connections. You may be alone in the place that you are. You may have many people around you that you can connect with and feel wonderful and joyful with. But remember, this is a great time at the beginning of the ascension where it is necessary for you to try to connect not only try but actually connect feel that connection one with another 
the love, the understanding, the joy, the positivity that is brought about by each individual that is rising and is bringing their energies to this purpose. Is there questions? Yes, there is a question. Um, this is from Sarah. And she says, hello, Buddha. Much love. Much. I would, I would like more clarity on the dream I had where I pulled a veil covering from my eyes. Can you tell me a little more about this? Yes. You are living in a place where there is much stimulus coming from the outside. And sometimes it tends to veil the vision from the, what the truth is from the inside. You need, you're pulling away the veil, the way, the way that it is pulled away is for you to see what it is that you need to do. There has been many visions come to you as of who you are and what, if, what your purpose is in this world. But many people try to stop it or many things try to stop it. Do not allow them to bring themselves into you where they can make a difference. Remember that you are your perfect self and that you have the willpower and all the things that you need to move forward. Plus, the universe is with you. You are blessed and you are one of the great ones. And so, therefore, you must know that these things are only there to hold back the ascension that is you yourself. You are part of it and will always be part of it. Stretch out, remove the veil. Understand, see clearly who you are and what your purpose is. If that is not, if you cannot see that at this time, do a meditation and bring that into you because you are important, and the things that you will do will help many. Well, thank you, Buddha. Much love. I have a question. Oh, go ahead, Michelle. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of things happening in our cosmos, and I am not one well-versed in this arena and subject matter, and I was wondering if you could give us kind of a description of what is happening right now and the significance for our development, growth, what, how it affects us and our ascension. Many questions there and many answers there as well. Thank you for that question. What is going on in our cosmos is a great change. There, you have started on the path to the ascension, which is your evolution, which is also your destiny. And there are many here to help you, but there are many here to hinder you as well. Now, the energies of the earth are also changing. The, the skies have given you many, many symbols recently, since September 28th, since the, the triad blood moon, there's been symbols in the sky and now the alignment of planets and many other things telling you that this is a time of change, telling you this is a time of awareness, telling you that this is time to wake up and be a part of the universe. And that is what is happening in your cosmos. There are many coming to visit to help stimulate the ascension and then there are also many there to slow it down. So you must work, you must understand the changes because they are not only changes in the world because when the world changes you also change. Your physicality, your mental state and your spiritual state emotional state as well will all come into question because when there is change it is not easy. Now even though the change is good for the ascension it's still difficult. Why? 
because you will be different. You will have different responsibilities in the sense that you will be tasked to maintain the goodness, the love, the joy, and the understanding. The energy that is going out and coming in is something new and precious. And you are not used to it, and sometimes you can possibly ignore it. But I do not want you to do that. And that is why this is a good question. I was coming in to tell you about your connection one with another, and that was important because that energy builds the community of light that is necessary for the ascension to continue. Oh, certainly, it is already moving in a great way, but keep the fire moving forward and getting larger instead of perhaps remaining static. Give it more fuel. Give it more understanding. Give it more of who you are because it is who you are. Now, I do not think I answered that question fully about the cosmos. The Earth energies are changing. As you all know and have known for a long time, they are essential to the change that will happen on the Earth with Mother Gaia. She is protecting you, she is advancing you, and she is giving you the strength that you need in her ultimate wisdom to move forward and become part of a new world. Accept this, even though it may be difficult sometimes to understand why this has to happen, but you will see the changes coming little by little, and it will seem almost magic the way that the world is going to transform. It will take time. Like the ascension, it starts off very small and works into a greater and greater acceptance and assimilation of all peoples. But this is an era where people are going through many changes. And I just want you to know that God and Mother Father God, Spirit of the Universe, creativity, the Creator, we, they are all with you, as well as many of the many species that are out there. The angels have come to give more voice to messages, to give greater healing, to do the things that they are meant to do at this time period. Accept them. Bring them. Call on them. Talk to them. Talk to all those that will help and you will be fine. Thank you. Okay, Jay. <laughs> Hi. Hello. I have two questions. Yes. The first being, if taxes are to be eliminated in the United States, when do you foresee this occurring? I did not hear the first part. What? One, two, three, yes. testing. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. If taxes, are, if taxes are to be eliminated in the United States, when do you foresee this occurring? I do not see that occurring anytime soon. The reason oh. is they, they use the taxes to bring themselves prosperity. They use the taxes to fund things that are they feel to be necessary now. There will be a time when there won't be taxes. But the first thing that must happen is that something must fall and then something must rise. Do you understand? I do. And my last question, since you were talking about change, yes. I had an experience. I was talking to my grandmother and I was expressing to her, well, telling her the things that excite me, things that I feel like I'm going to be doing in the future, etc. Yes. And as I was doing this, I looked up at the sky, and at that moment, a meteor appeared. And it began traveling across the sky. It was very beautiful. And I felt like 
that meant something. Could you uh, give me your uh, perspective on that? Thank you. Yes. There will be a time when the thoughts and patterns of your desires will be like a meteor. It will seem like things are moving very quickly. It is actually a sign of your future, but be cautious. Meteors move very, very quickly and burn out sometimes before they should. So it is also a warning to you to take it slow and let things happen in its due time so that they do not burn out too quickly. However, it is a beautiful light in the sky and part of who you should be and will be. Thank you, Buddha. That was really, that was really awesome. You're welcome. Okay, Sharon, would you like to go next? Yes, one moment. Hello, Buddha. My name is Sharon. How are you? I am wonderful. I love um, a lot of the interviews that we've watched you in recently. They're so amazing. Thank you for your messages. And yeah. I have a couple. <laughs> I have a couple <laughs> questions for my friend Randy first. Hi, Randy. She's watching, and. <laughs> She said, am I on the correct career path? Will I ever have children? Is my destiny to travel the world and love on it? Those are big questions, and they have big answers. Yes. Because everything is what it is at the moment. Now, from this moment, I could answer all those, all those questions one way, but the next moment it may change. So let me tell her this. The things that she is working on will not pass away in a, a flame of waste. She is on the right path. But there are many decisions to be made about the future. Do you understand that? She cannot just say, ask the questions and have the answers given because the answers are part of who she is and she must display that interest in the future. She must give the right decisions the r and the right powers the right understanding. Now, have her thank God for all these things that are to come because she is on the right path and travel is in her future. But it depends on how she moves forward, how much of these things will come forth. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, thank you. I know she'll appreciate that. Mom, did you want to ask? Yeah, okay. My mother, Julie. <laughs> Hi, I'm Julie. Mm, namaste. Julie, how are you? Thank you. Many changes have come about with me and inside me and I feel like I'm learning to love myself for the first time or it's taken a long time and, uh, and I'm struggling, with, struggling a little bit with, um, with my job and with uh, my house and some personal uh, decisions I've made lately. I see. Uh, Let me stop you ahead. there. Okay. And then you can finish in a little bit. The very fact that you're coming into your own, finding this self-love, finding this expression for yourself is a great, great moment. All other things pale in comparison to this self-love that you are finding. Now, the answers to all these smaller questions that come around you that are third dimensional um, are going to be like wisps of air. Once you find that your love is complete for yourself, you will know how to handle all things that are third dimensional because you know why? Because the spirit is wise and the spirit understands who you are and why you are. 
you have a purpose and you that is one of the things that is now starting to show a light into you your purpose your way of shining the light outward is coming to you now you see all these things about third dimension are unimportant in the sense that they will not give you the things you need to succeed but you are finding that your purpose is important your love and example your example is great and many will prosper from it children and adults alike go ahead and continue do you turn it on? Mm -hmm. thank you, thank you I, <clears throat> I feel a lot of that um, I'm very happy with myself and I, I understand that I've been able to let go of a lot of past which is hallelujah finally <laughs> yes and That's I just yes. yeah <laughs> I have a little past, okay the past can really affect the future can't it mm, yes so when you let it go when you let it pass then that frees the future up to be much more clearer and much more productive thank you very much Good thank to you, you. I, that's all for now thank you very much you are welcome and stay on this path because I see that your joy increases the yes. reason it does is because you know who you are finally you finally understand that there is a reason for it. all the things that have happened and all the, the things that are you your creativity has taken a turn mm -hmm. and it is showing you that there is something there that is reaching to you but also that is burning to get out thank you thank you so much thank you so much you are welcome well, well. Namaste Buddha. Namaste Buddha. Namaste. I have a question about this equinox coming up. It's it's not an ordinary equinox, and uh, I was wondering if you'd like to talk about that. I mentioned earlier all the signs in the sky that have happened since last year. This is another one of those signs that is important. It is a it says be awakened, be aware that there are many things happening in your world. Be understanding that this is not natural. Many people will come and say, ah, but this happens every so many thousand years or whatever but no not so many at a time is that not correct to you this is something for you though this equinox is something for you it is giving you the sign that your future is intact your meaning, understanding, and determination will be paid off. And the things that you want are coming. Do not doubt. I know you have gone through a time recently where you said, but wasn't it all supposed to happen already? But no, your time is to come. They are giving you patience, teaching you, that you're growing in a way that is far beyond what you could possibly imagine. But you need to be there to be able to do the job that is at hand. Yes, you do. You are one of those 
that has the meanings to many things. Hold them in your hand, but do not keep them. Spread them to others. Now, great understanding and thought processes are still working with you. Much love. Much love. Namaste. Gratitude. You understand what I have told you. Absolutely. You've been talking to me for quite a while. Yes, I have. Much respect. Go and be a Buddha yourself. Thank you, Buddha. Okay, I have a question from Amy. She would like to know if you can tell her what is causing her migraine headaches that she's been experiencing. Yes, one moment, please. How long have these headaches have been? I'm not sure. She did not say. <coughs> but I can help her get rid of them. Let me tell you how. Ground yourself into Mother Earth. Make sure you are fully part of who she is. Let her know what your problems are. Bring your energies to her completely. And then... Accept who you are completely. There is something in your mind that is fighting against your destiny. It is causing the brain to hurt. It is causing the brain to want to explode because you do not see a way out of the third dimension into the fourth dimension where you want to be. Now, you are born into third dimension and you could pull yourself up through grounding into the fourth dimension, but accept that you cannot live there. Accept that this pain is third dimensional. Let, your, let it go because it is not who you are. Pain of this nature cannot exist when you are at one with yourself. Okay, thank you so much. Accept the healing from yourself. Okay, Maria, are you ready? Yes, thank you. Great and, and much love. I have a question, Buddha. You explain um, the importance of our connection as a as a group during this time of ascension. I would like you to shed light about our connection within ourselves, with our true self and our soul during the ascension. Yes. When you're connecting to yourself, that is the most important thing. When you're connecting to others, that's the light in you shining out. That is the first thing you must know. You must connect with yourself in the truth. You must not say, or, or you must not bring things into you that do not resonate. You must resonate with the things that are within you and be true to yourself and let that love of self bear itself out in the truth that when you do personally and fully love yourself, others see that love. Others see your enlightenment because what is enlightenment? The soul is of God, right? that perfect connection from God the Creator to God the Soul is your enlightenment because you cannot help but move that energy out of you, move that thought process into a great light that others can see. That is enlightenment. When somebody can walk into a room and feel your loving presence, what greater gift 
to the world yes. is that. Yes, thank you. But in that, I um, actually I was gonna ask you, when we are enlightened like that, we actually we are getting um, our inner guidance will help <laughs> us in our path. Am I correct? Yeah. Yes. Now there is nothing wrong with seeking guidance through meditation or for from others that are wise. But do not be accepting of anything that does not resonate with your person. Some people may find one thing resonates with them because it is who they have to be. But it may not resonate with you because that is not who you are. Each individual is different. Accept only those resonations that come to you and build you up and make you want to move forward. Do you understand? Yes, but uh, I'm a little bit confused as well because if it's if it's if that connection is be built between you and your soul, it does resonate, doesn't it? It is who you really are if it resonates. Yes. That is what I'm saying. I'm just saying if there's something coming from the outside and it does not resonate with you, do not bring it in. Thank you. Much love. Much love. And I know that you are still confused a bit, but do a meditation and you will find that you are already who you are to be. And your connection with God is very clear and precise. Yes, just <laughs> thank you. It. Just accept it. It's sometimes hard to accept that it is so easy. But is it not the way God would want it to be? So easy and peaceful. The hard part is accepting that it is actually true. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sometimes you can doubt yourself. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You are welcome. Okay, Buddha, can we ask if there are any questions in the room with you? Is there any questions in the room with me? Much love to you. Much love. Is that all? Okay, I have a question from Karen. She says, thank you for coming and sharing your presence. I send you love from my heart. Thank Please. you, and that is the best kind of love. <laughs> Please speak more on the importance of connection and how it wakes up to oneness and why it is important to realize the divine in everyone. Namaste. Ah, oh, that is a beautiful sentiment. The connection one to another is the beginning of reaching out and trying to enlighten the ones around you. The, the connection of love that you feel one to another is that not a connection of giving. Give of yourself and become one with all. It does not matter if you stand out in the crowd or if you blend into the crowd when it comes to oneness because you are just becoming part of the great fire of God. Now, you are unique. Each one of you is one in yourself and is A purpose that has to be shown to the world. Oneness as a group, as a people, as an ascension, as souls one to another. It is so important that you understand that your great light is 
an example to the universe, example to the galaxy, example to all other species, gods, and whatever. I want to speak of your personal love for yourself because that's where it starts and that's where it has to start. How can you love the universe if you don't love yourself? You've heard that before. How can you love someone truly if you don't love yourself? And so therefore, find that love within yourself because it will only lead to you showing love to everyone else. It will only lead to you coming forth in your enlightenment. It will only lead to perfection in your relationships in many ways because you are not looking for yourself in somebody else's eyes but you're looking for the love of God in someone else's eye. Let God shine through everyone's eyes and when you look at them look for it so that you may shine your love on that love. Make sure that you are connecting in a way that is not third dimensional in the sense that you are just looking upon another third dimensional being, but you, you're looking in, uh, on another creature of God. Even when you see the aliens and they're not beautiful, they are filled with God. And so, therefore, your fear can be squelched by the very fact that you can look into their eyes and see that God. There should be no fear, because in love there is no fear. What is there to be afraid of in the world? Death, pain, being hurt, sorrow, loneliness. The things that are in the world don't matter. The love that is in you and pours out from you matters. And what kind of fear is there in that love? It is pure. It comes out in such a pure way that fear does not exist. Why? Because it doesn't matter what happens to you. You love unconditionally. And if you could all do that, you would be a, a world of gods in many senses. Do you understand? Fear does not belong in your life or pain or suffering. I know it is a part of third dimension. It is there because it has been brought there. And it has been brought there and over and over it's been talked about and it's been experienced and it's been validated. Validate purity. Validate the heart. Validate love. Give your validation something stronger than these petty things and darknesses. Validate the things that are of wholeness and bring life to others and love to others and love to yourself. Validate positivity. Do not give credence to these negative things. It only gives them power. If you speak negative things. It only gives them power. Why speak of the negativity when you want to increase the positivity? Why speak about something that is not good or brings others down when you want to be bringing each other up? I know that is not possible to live without the negativity because you run into it every day in society every moment someone is trying to 
tell you their negative opinion or their thoughts about being real and they bring a negative thought to being real don't they oh be real that's that'll never happen no be real in God because in that sense God has no negativity he accepts it because you are his children he accepts everything about you and loves you no matter what but that doesn't mean that he is a negative being you'll say well, well, well where did the negativity come from sometimes negativity comes from your creation <laughs> But find love as your major goal in life. Because with that love comes the destiny that is yours. When God is with you and God lights your way, how can you fail? The God power is omnipotent. But a lot of your belief systems are very small. Expand yourself. Send your light out. And if you send your light out, believe me, you're not diminishing anything from within yourself. It's not, if I send out too much light, it'll be gone. It's not how it works. The soul is always overflowing with the God light because you're connected to the God. And therefore, that God light and from God to you overflows and is constantly lit. And you can never give enough of it. And the more you give, the more you get. And I know, I see in your history, in my history as well, that when people are very good, the negative really crowds you out trying to make you do something that you will regret or makes you do something that will make your light last. There's the Gandhis of the world that shone their light out and what happened was he won a war without ever raising a fist. It is possible to destroy war with love to destroy hate with love the word destroy is a negative word but to eliminate all the negative things seems impossible doesn't it but eliminate as many in your life in your world in your understanding as you can I am sure third dimension has enough negativity to go around that whenever you bring out your light it will come to try to put it out will try to hurt you kill you harm you but it will make a difference in the world if you don't let it go out if you don't let it affect you if you show that you're unafraid to love if you show that you're unafraid to be the perfect person that you are meant to be because your goals will be met your understanding love and goodness and kindness will never be forgotten I know I speak of martyrdom but you don't have to be a martyr in this life at least not yet but you do have to be a loving spirit an example to the world and if you were that example in the world think of how great the world would be if they just respected your example oh, that is truly a beautiful message thank you so much Buddha it is the message that needs to come across in this time People need strength in their own selves 
in love of God, in the strength that they are not alone. And they should not start feeling sorry for themselves any longer because there is no reason. They are very loved. They are very empowered and very much a part of who God is. Feeling sorry for oneself is only saying that they accept what other people say and what the world is saying about them. Do not accept that. Accept that you are part of the light. There's no need to feel sorry for yourself. Feel sorry for those that do not have the light or do not understand it and bring yourself as an example to them so that they might experience something that they never experienced before. Can we talk to Jen and see if she has something to drink? Of course. Almost stay. Be well and be happy. For when you're God, with God, you're always happy, no matter what the situation or experience. He can bring joy into any experience. Remember that. Believe it. Namaste. Thank you. Hello? Hi, Jim. We felt you needed something to drink, so we're oh, okay. going to bring you out to get you something. Your voice was really turning harsh <laughs> and going high. And <laughs> Alrighty then. Well, we, I feel might, better. we might turn in a little early today. <laughs> no, is, your voice, is your voice giving you trouble today? I don't know. That's what you said. So I was. Yeah, it sounded it. kind of funky. So we figured we'd better mm -hmm. give you a little bit of a break. Sounded a bit good. <laughs> must be coming across that. Way. Okay, it must be. Uh, they say it in the room. It didn't sound that bad, but okay, it sounds a little bit hoarse. But um, do you want to see if anybody else is around, or do you, or yes, you done I today? Will, like, yeah. we'll see if anybody else is around. And then I um, will call it a day. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Does Jim. anybody have any requests for anybody? Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey, Stanley, Dorama. if you're around, let me know. Yeah, Dorama, if she'd like to come through, Jim. Uh, Dorama, yes, okay. All right, I'm going to do a little meditation. I'll be back. Thank you, Jim. 